The moment you subordinate to somebody else and think they have something and exaggerate them and minimize you, you're going to have the anxiety about speaking. Have you ever all of a sudden got the opportunity to public speak and went, oh boy, and had butterflies in your stomach and had anxiety about speaking? Well, probably so. Most people have that. Some people can claim that there's more fear in public speaking than dying. Well, I'm a public speaker and I can say today that I don't have the fear of public speaking. I have more of the fear of not speaking. But there was a time when I, like most people, had the anxiety of standing in front of a group of people and expressing what's inside to the outside world. So just in case you have that or somebody you know has that, I'd like to take a moment to talk about things that I've discovered about public speaking and the fears of public speaking that people sometimes face. First of all, there are seven primary fears that I found underlying public speaking fear. The fear of public speaking, you don't have a problem speaking one-on-one -on -one with people, you talk to them every single day. But the second you get in front of a group of people that you think has something you don't, you some clam up. Let me give an example. Let's say you're standing in front of a group of kindergarten class and they're little five, six-year-olds and you're doing a little presentation on something that you know your own life you're probably not going to have any problem public speaking because you know your content and you're not intimidated by anybody in the class. And you feel like maybe you're the authority because you're older in the class. Now let's go to first grade. You probably, again, will do fine. Second grade, third grade. We'll go up the grades until all of a sudden you reach a point where you go, oops, I'm now having anxiety. The second you think there's somebody in the class, maybe you get to college level or high school level, Second, there's somebody in the class that you think has more intelligence than you, more knowledge than you about the topic you're presenting, uh, or more successful than you because you're speaking on maybe business, or more wealth than you because you may be talking about finance, or maybe a more stable relationship than you because you may be talking about relationships, or maybe more social influence than you, and um, they may have more political influence or social contacts and you're talking about influence and or possibly better health than you and more education about health and more knowledgeable about health than you and you're talking about health or more spiritual awareness than you and you're talking about spirituality. Anytime you're about to present something that you think in any way, whether it's true or not, but you believe that the people in the audience have more than you as far as experience or knowledge in the area that you're speaking about, you have a natural tendency to want to subordinate to that and put them on a pedestal and put you in the pit. In the process of doing it, you'll compare yourself to them instead of actually share the message that's in your heart. As long as you're thinking about yourself relative to them instead of thinking about them with your message, you'll have a hesitancy about speaking. But if you're in front of people that you know with certainty that you're the expert in the area, you don't have that. That's why it's so important to make sure that when you're presenting, you present something you really know and that you're certain about and you have experience with, and not get outside your core competence, and make sure you prepare. Those all enhance the experience of speaking and build up confidence. But the second you see somebody that you think has more knowledge or more experience or more success in those areas, again, they're more spiritually aware, they're more intelligent, they're more successful in business, they're more successful financially or in relationship or social influence or possibly health and fitness, the second you think you're the underdog and they're the overdog, uh, boom, you're going to have the fear of speaking because it's a natural tendency to want to listen to people you think that have more than you and to speak to people you think you can share with, that can help. So you want to make sure in order to overcome those fears is by stopping and looking in your audience and looking who in the audience it is that you're intimidated by. It's not all of them. It's just a handful of people probably. I was in, in uh, Houston, Texas, and I was doing a presentation or helping some of my students do a presentation, and a woman got up and she was anxious. And I stopped her right in the middle of it, and I said, I noticed you're freezing up. I said, who in the room right here are you intimidated by? And she didn't want to say, but she finally said, well, this woman right here. I said, what specific trait do you think, or what does she do that you think that she's more successful or more achieving than you? I said, well, this lady definitely has more financial savvy and more business savvy and has more sophistication and more experience than me. And I said, okay, and look and scan. Who else in the room? Yeah, this woman right here has got more degrees in education than me. 
is there anybody else? She says, no, now that I think about it, it's only two people in the room. And I said, your anxiety about speaking is because of those two people in the room. Now let's go in there and ask a question. Where and when do you display and demonstrate sophistication? Where and when do you display, display and demonstrate the education? Where do you demonstrate and educate or have <clears throat> experience in business? And I made her go in there and inventory where she was, where she was not honoring it, and wake it up. And the moment we kept doing that exercise, and owning what she saw in them, eventually she realized that she had a different form of those successes and achievements and acquired, but it was just in her form. And she then realized that she had it quantitatively and qualitatively equal to the people in the room. The moment she leveled that playing field and didn't see them more and didn't see herself less, she just spoke comfortably. She was just sharing herself with a friendship. And so the moment you subordinate to somebody else and think they have something and exaggerate them and minimize you, you're going to have the anxiety about speaking. But the second you realize that whatever you see in your audience, you have in your own form, you liberate that anxiety. And so preparing for the class, for the presentation, making sure it's in the core competence, owning the traits of the people that you may be intimidated by, and some of those are just your own illusions because they may not even be that educated, they may just look the part, and owning that will make you not have so much anxiety about it because the anxiety of speaking is primarily because of subordination, thinking that they know more than you and you're worrying about their opinion. You're giving power to their opinion over you instead of your own. So whenever I see a group of people, uh, if I feel any anxiety whatsoever, which is rare today, um, I may go and ask what specific it is about them that I think that they have that I don't. And I go and find out where I have that. See, nothing's missing in you. It's in a form you're not honoring. And when you realize that, you can own the traits of anybody you see and then just have a conversation. And if you take one person at a time and talk to them and another person and talk to them and talk to them as you go around the audience and cover everybody after a while, all you're doing is having a conversation with somebody. And you can always say when you're in public speaking, you can always say, I don't know that, but I'll find out. You don't have to know everything, but you just have to share sincerely something you do know with what it is that makes a difference. Think about the purpose of your speaking. Think about what your message is and focus on your message, not on yourself. If you do that, you'll do fine. But own the traits of the people that you're in there so you're not intimidated. Know your material, plan it out, structure it, share it, and um, enjoy the power of public speaking. It's one of the greatest gifts you'll have because your voice is the instrument upon which you play the symphony of your life. Thank you for joining me for this presentation today. If you found value out of the presentation, please go below and please share your comments. We certainly appreciate that feedback. And be sure to subscribe and hit the notification icons. That way I can bring more content to you and share more to help you maximize your life. I look forward to our next presentation. Thank you so much for joining me.